I want to introduce someone that I've come to love recently, and uh, it's been a great pleasure to now start some partner projects with this person with Mina, and it's been really exciting. We've got so many different things in common, so many people that we know in common, and it, it's been a real delight to get to know him. And then recently I got introduced to this new project that you're getting ready to hear about, and it's so incredibly exciting to me. I just can't tell you. Uh, and you'll find out why in just a minute. But it, it has to do with veterans, and we live in Huntsville, Alabama, so it's a military town surrounded by a lot of military people, and it's very exciting to me to hear about this project. So I'm not going to say anything more. I just want Eric Kalpak to come up here and bring Julie, and I'll let you introduce Julie. But Era, thank you so much for being here. Thanks. Welcome, Eric, please. Thank you, Tana. A um, couple of things. Mina, Mina had just called us Sunday night. I had an opportunity to meet Mina, I guess, a couple of years ago. And, and as, as uh, Bob said, you know, you just fall, you just fall in love with her. I think everybody that everybody that knows her, you know, it's an instant, absolutely an instant connection. And Tana, over a short period of time, you know, we got to know, and it's just it, absolutely incredible. A privilege to be here. Uh, today with you folks. Mina said, if you'll come, you're going to also learn a lot too, not just do some, do some talking. And, and, and I already have, you know, from Greg, you know, he talks about Georgia Bull. He's never going to be a Georgia Bulldog. You know, that may be a problem. I don't know if that's, if that, if that is with any of you. I got a degree in education. I majored in recreation and I played tennis at Georgia, you know, so I'm not the smartest guy in the world. And judging from the looks of some of you folks, man, I guess you're a little bit over, uh, over my head here. But at any rate, um, you know, Mina said, hey, do you have time to put the PowerPoint together and, you know, all that? So if you can get the next slide up, do you have, you don't have anything? Oh, my goodness. You know, what are we going to do? I guess we're going to have to ad lib it if we don't have the, no, I'm only kidding. You know, we didn't have a chance to put up any PowerPoint together. But if I just said next slide, you know, and then I say we got some IT problems and we'll just try to work through, the, you know, those IT problems and, and, and give, you, give you the gist of... Uh, uh, of what it is anyway, anyway but, but a, a couple of things, you know, my background very, very, very briefly, I was in financial services uh, from 1978 to 1996, got out of that, uh, bought a couple of technology companies, you know, I've had an opportunity to make tons of money, you know, in my career and then brilliantly knew how to lose tons of money, so if anybody in here needs to know how to lose some money too, I've got a perfect example on how you can do all of that. So I've got the capabilities, you know, the well-rounded, well-rounded uh, um, experience in, in some of that, but my passion today though you know, when, when I had an opportunity to meet Julie and we were talking about the Veterans Lodge, which is, which is I, I, I think you're going to be really excited about it, and, and we shared some of that with Mina, and she said, you know, she said, Julie, though, Julie's the one that, that, that created the whole project, and she also looks a heck of a lot better than you do, you know, so if you can get Julie to come up here, so the night, just, just last night, actually, you know, we, we started chat said, Julie, is there any way you could possibly make it to Atlanta to kind of tell the story of what I think is going to, it, it, it's, it's a revolutionary, revolutionary story. And would she come up and share the veterans uh, project with us? And she said she did. So before I bring her up, I want to tell you just two things, if you could jot down since we don't have a PowerPoint. You know, my passion right now is really getting involved in ministries and trying to make a difference in the country. We're launching one tomorrow night. Mina's very excited about it. It's called Beyond Christmas. So if you go to beyondchristmas.org, the site is going to be live. It's actually kind of live now, but they're still working on some stuff. But we're going to try to do a lot of stuff for a lot of people around the country. You know, whenever you have a disaster, everybody kind of pulls together. But nobody seems to pull together unless there's a disaster going on, you know. So what we're going to try to do is make an impact, you know, maybe change in the world, get everybody trying to help everybody, and see if maybe we can make somewhat of a difference in the country. And I think if we all started doing that, you'd all agree that something might change a little bit, right? Yes. You know, I'm used to... Yeah, I'm used to being around a bunch of people. You know, if I say right, they say right, you know. And, but I know you guys, you know, you guys are big executives and stuff. And say, look, I ain't into that kind of stuff. But if I told you before we left today, if you said right every time I said right, I was going to pay you $1,000, you'd say right, right? Right. And you'd say it with a little more enthusiasm than that, right? Right. Okay, but well, I'm not going to give you 1000 bucks at the end of the day. But Mina is talking to you in this whole environment on how everybody could share and really benefit from what everybody else is doing. So, you know, with that, 
I also want to mention Mark Cook. Mark Cook is, uh, yeah, I've got to get him back to the airport. He's a, he's a movie producer. He also, um, he's involved in NASCAR. His son's a NASCAR uh, driver, and we've been involved just, just very recently, and we shared with Mina. He's got a technology that is going to revolutionize how sugar is made in the country, which is going to impact, it, it, it's literally going to impact you know, the cost of fuel. I mean, it, it's, it's unbelievable. We are probably, I don't know, a week away from really making some formal announcements on that. And as they do, I think Mina's going to kind of pass along what it is that we have there. But that's absolutely incredible um, technology that's coming. So with that, you know, I've already taken up all the time that Mina said we could have. But I'm going to bring up, I'm going to bring up uh, Julie Connell. She's going to, this, this is her dream. This is her passion. She's been in real estate with, with high level, high level uh, uh, pension funds, high net worth individuals. Her average sales were somewhere in the neighborhood of $150 million. She's traveled the country and she quit all that. She started in 1996 and she quit all that in 2007, you know, to kind of pursue the dream of actually helping people, which led to this veterans project, which she started in 2009, and she has it to the point now where it's ready to launch. So when you see the passion in this gal, you know, it's an, an, an incredible talent. She's a heck of a lot prettier than I. So welcome, Julie Connell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, that's a great introduction. And I am so glad to be here today. I really do feel like this is going to be a life-changing day for a lot of us. I've already met a lot of people that there is no other way I would have met them without being here. So this is, this is an incredible opportunity. And he is right. Um, I've been very blessed in my life. And I was able to kind of retire at a young age and really do want to do some things in my community. And I started doing that. And during that, I met a young man who I love very much, who's married to my secretary, and um, spent 10 days in Beaver Creek with him, snow skiing with me, my niece, and my secretary. And we were extremely high energy, high maintenance women. And he was incredible, I just loved him. Well, three tours later, um, he comes, and I have to get my secretary to leave him because he's an alcoholic, he's angry, he's, you know, we're repairing holes in the wall because they were renting an apartment, and I'm like, you know, what are we going to do? we got to help this child. And he is a child. He was 22 years old. There was no help for him. And I was very upset about that. I'm like, you know, my motto was always like, you know, just come on, get up, go sit out in the sun. You know, get, your, get up, put one leg in front of the other, put your pants on. What are you doing? Get over this. But he couldn't. Matter of fact, he was rewarded by the military for many other things. And he was trained to do certain things. There was no uh, downtime for him. He would stop in Kuwait. 48 hours later, here he is walking the streets with you and I, and he has issues, and he needs help, and he couldn't get it. So that's where this all started with the Veterans Lodge. They need a lot of help. They deserve that help. It's our duty to help them. It's not that everybody's ignoring it. We just don't know what to do, and I don't know what to do. Right now, one of the uh, top injuries that's coming back is frontal head injuries, and there is no cure for that. But we're going to work on different ways and different things that we can do. You know, how do we help these guys get back into society? How do we help them emotionally, physically, financially? We want to help them individually, and we want to help their families. They're all dealing with a lot of changes and stresses. So I came up with the Veterans Lodge. I started a not-for-profit. It took me a little over a year just to get the not-for-profit established because I want to do it a certain way, which is a bit different than a typical not-for-profit. I want to have Southern Communities Foundation at the top, which is a not-for-profit, helping and having for-profit companies underneath my umbrella to help support this Veterans Lodge and give these most needed jobs back to our soldiers. There's not a better employee in the world than a soldier. They're not lazy. They want to work. And right now, the, there's 29% unemployment in our young soldiers are coming back the age 18 to 24, 29% unemployment. The average age of that wounded soldier with naked head injuries is 24 years old. So they got the direct cost that we're going to be paying medical cost, the disability payments, the unemployment. So that's a societal impact. It's going to affect every single one of us in this room. 
And these are, our, these are our men, these are our women. These are people that are fighting for us every day so we can be in places just like this, this incredible place. So I feel like it is our duty. It's my duty, I know, and I'm going to fight hard for them just like they fought for me. We're going to provide an environment that they can come to that's loving, that's welcoming, that they can not feel like they're coming because they're wounded. They're not disabled in my eyes at all. They're going to come because they're going to help mentor other people under the guise of volunteering, mentoring, coming to get their GED, coming to get their post-secondary education, and coming to get vocational training. They're not coming because they're wounded. There's a lot of great, great concepts out there. Some of my friends are doing them at Florida State University, trying to bring these men onto a campus to get education. The problem is they don't feel normal. They, they don't feel, they're not going to have the same things in common with my 23-year-old nephew who's just worried about getting into the fraternity and gets drunk every other night. I mean, they're just not going to have the same, they're not going to have commonalities with that. They've seen things that you and I will never, ever, ever see, nor do we want to see in our lifetime. So this campus, like that I'm setting, it's going to be like a lifelong learning center, and it'll be a family for them forever. They can always come back to this lodge, get new technical training, um, get their degrees, get their education, and their families. Their families have got to have support also. Um, I, I didn't have a speech plan. I'm just talking from the heart, so I probably rambled a lot in here, and I hope I didn't. But I hope that you guys can get the idea of what we're doing, and mainly is reintegrating these children, these soldiers, back into society, financially, emotionally, um, physically. Everything from soup to nuts is going to happen here on this village. We're going to have the rehabilitation center. We're going to have, uh, it's all outpatient. And there will be uh, housing on this facility. Each facility will be between 150 to 500 acres. It will be a large facility and a resort type of setting, but very comfortable and loving and welcoming environment. Um, we've been working three years on this, and we're just at the point now we're getting ready to start building our first one here very shortly. So um, www.veteranslodge.com. If anybody gets a chance to take a look at that, it'll be growing every day and um, keep up with what we're doing. I hope that any of you have any questions at all, please contact me anytime. Thank you.